What's up guys, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to show you how we filmed these amazing underwater scenes from our latest horror short film, Drowning Shadows. If you haven't watched it already, be sure to do that first by clicking the link down below. Now since this whole short film took place at night and we shot all the above water scenes with the Sony FX6 cinema camera, I for sure couldn't use a GoPro for the underwater scenes. Even though I have the GoPro Hero 11 Black Edition, there's just no way this footage could hold up next to the FX6 footage, especially at night where it just falls apart. So I wanted to use my A7S III with its small form factor, good overall capabilities, resolution, autofocus and of course also the amazing low light capabilities. So I went on Amazon to find an underwater housing for it. There are a lot of options including this bag which was just way too fishy for me. So I went for this Sea Frogs underwater housing for about 700 euros. And boy is this underwater housing insane. I never expected it to work this flawlessly especially for the money. Of course 700 euros is a lot of money. But for underwater cases the price range is basically open end. I thought I'd probably have to do all the settings put it in a case and then film, take it out to do adjustments, but no. With this case you can really adjust all the settings of the camera while it's in the case and you're underwater. Maybe for some of you it's a no-brainer, but I really didn't think it would work that good. I mean maybe the start and stop button, but not every single button this reliable. I'm talking so good about the case it probably sounds like it's a sponsored video, it's not, I paid for it with my own money, it's just a really amazing case. So this Seafrance camera housing is made for the Sony a7S III with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. For different lenses there are different cases, however I used the case with the Sony a7S III and the 28mm f2 lens with autofocus and it worked out perfectly. So let's look at how easy the case is to use. First we have to open it. Therefore we have to slide this red arrow button thing upwards and then we can open the latch and then open the camera case. Then we can just slide the camera in slightly, drag these two rubber things upwards. One is to control the camera's upper control wheel, the other one is just to hold it in place and then carefully wiggle the camera forward until it's securely placed in the case and held by all the rubbers on the inside of the case. Then we have this thing that we have to slide into the camera's culture mount. From what I've read it's for a data exchange through the case I think, but I didn't use that, I just put it there so it's out of place and so it's stored away. Then we can close the case and latch again and we're basically ready to shoot. Now we just have to turn the camera inside the case on, which is very easily doable through the case with this lever on top and then we can start filming. What I like most about this case is not just that it's easy to use, works really good and that you can control the camera while it's in the case. I also love the included dome which is this big glass in front of the lens that allows you to capture shots above and under the water simultaneously. The underwater housing also comes with a protection case for the dome. Now I found it really easy to shoot underwater with this case. I also used my snorkeling gear to look at the screen underwater and to sometimes get more air when I was not underwater but just under the surface. Of course it's a little bit tricky to shoot underwater if you're down at the bottom and one to shoot upwards without a flip screen, like talking about if you're just using snorkeling gear and not diving equipment. <laughs> But with a little bit of trial and error you can capture some amazing shots. One thing that was sometimes not that good for shots but sometimes actually very helpful was the buoyancy of the case. Since the case had air in it, it was swimming on the water surface. This was good for stabilization underwater and if you're filming for example in the open sea that you don't lose it because it always comes back to the surface. But if I wanted to shoot down below at the bottom of the pool it sometimes was a little bit difficult to get the camera down. There is a thing at the side of the case which I think is for pressure equalization but I haven't yet tried it out because after all we just filmed in a pool that was like 180 centimeters deep and not 60 meters down below the surface. So it was fine, I just let the case drag me along the pool to get some stable shots. Lastly some tips, even though the underwater shots are relatively stable sometimes, it helps to use a stabilizer in post, especially during moving shots. Speaking of moving shots, treat your underwater cinematography like normal filming. Think about framing and movement of the camera. In this example, following the actress and moving towards her for her reaction of the wine glass falling to the floor and her being framed on the right side. The wine glass slowly falling down to the bottom of the pool with these amazing light reflections and everything. And yeah, that's how you get some awesome underwater shots. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. Also consider subscribing right here for more videos just like this one. You can find the final short film right here and you can find some more videos right here. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. Goodbye.